Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome to One Shoal. It's wonderful to have all of you here during Sukkot. And it's so, uh, so great to see so many wonderful people here at our early service. Um, Adi, <clears throat> who is one of our service leaders, has been telling me, we've got to go earlier, got to go earlier. I'm convinced that pretty soon he's going to be telling me, listen, we need to do uh, Shabbat services at 8 a.m. on Friday for the people in Fiji who desperately need uh, to have services at the correct uh, <laughs> at the correct time. Um, that's the wonderful and exciting thing about online community is that it's 4 o'clock my time. It's 10 o'clock in the U.K. and in Israel and, um, you know, all sorts of other places. It's lunchtime for our friends on the West Coast. But... That's why we have to do as many services as possible. That's why we have our 4 o'clock time uh, here, and then at 8 o'clock we're going to have Adi's service. So, uh, as uh, our wonderful professor here says, it's always Shabbat and cocktail hour somewhere. Fantastic. I love it. If this is your first time to One Shul, welcome. We have a custom that we start services by saying where we are hailing from. Where are you from? Tell us so that we can see what a wonderful uh, online community we have. I'm broadcasting right now from my office in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'll tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Rabbi Patrick Olive. Uh, I am the founder of Punk Torah, and I'm one of the co-founders of One Shul. Now, you may be confused. You may think to yourself, co-founder of One Shul, well, who's the other person? Well, the other person is you. You are the co-founder of One Shul. If it weren't for you, One Shul would not exist. We would not have this wonderful online community. And as I always like to tell people, we don't have memberships because we serve everybody. So by coming here, by being part of our community right now in this online Shabbat Sukkot service, you are a member of One Shul. Now, here's the exciting thing about being a member of One Shul, even though we don't have memberships. If you are a member or an unmember, as I like to say, of One Shul, that also makes you a leader. So, if you ever want to lead a Shabbat service, and by the way, we'll teach you and we'll help you write your own service that you can be comfortable with. If you ever want to lead a service, if you ever want to teach a class, if you ever want to host a chat, maybe you're not interested in academics and you're not interested in leading a service, but you just want to chat with other people and you want to start some conversations. That's kind of what started around the Shabbat table with Adi, and now it's evolved into a full Shabbat service. Um... If you are interested in writing, if you're interested in making YouTube videos, if you like music, art, whatever, there's always a service, or there's always um, a purpose for you here at One Shul. And let me tell you something, because Jenny uh, just brought it up, saying, I don't feel qualified, right? None of us are qualified. Because think about what it means to, to lead a service, right? Right? It means that um, somehow you magically talk for God, right? Um, it's all on you. If you screw it up, everyone's going to know, and you're going to be disqualified from Judaism, right? Ah, wrong. Of course not. We're a community. We care about each other. You know, I talk to Audie probably every other day. You know, I talk to Carl once a month. I don't talk to Diane nearly as much as I should. Um, you know, and there's more of you here in the chat room that I would love to talk to with more often. Um, any kind of sense that you may have about, oh, I'm not qualified. I shouldn't be able to do this. I'm not allowed. I'm going to sit in the back of the room and watch it being done because I want Judaism done at me. Um, this is the wrong community for you right? There are thousands of synagogues in the world. Uh, this one is the one where you get involved, and that's the rule. That's the rule. You come here, we're going to get you involved, and you don't have a choice. So um, let's go on ahead and get started. Uh, we don't have a siddur for uh, tonight's service. Um, it's a very uh, music video oriented service. Uh, everybody's been really enjoying those services when I do them, probably because I have a poor singing voice. Um, they don't teach you to be a particularly good cantor when you go to rabbinical school. So um, instead, I supplement with YouTube videos. So we're going to have a great service. There's going to be lots of YouTube videos. Um, some of the 
prayers um, actually will show up on the screen. You'll be able to sing along. If not, um, I promise you'll do fine. You won't get lost. And um, there's going to be lots of great discussion, lots of great opportunities. And I just want to mention where everyone is hailing from because it looks like we've got a cool mixed bag of people tonight. So Eugene, Oregon. And actually, I'm going to be going to Oregon very soon, and I'll tell you about that at the end of services. Uh, L.A., Virginia, uh, let's see, Paris, Ontario, uh, North Carolina, New York, Halifax, uh, Mississippi, New Orleans, uh, Philly, or the suburbs of Philly at least, Villanova, uh, Florida, let's see, where else have we got? Okay, so Atlanta here, all kinds of different places that people are hailing from, so thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for being here. We're going to get started. Um, by doing a little bit of Kabbalat Shabbat. This is one of my favorite songs. It's Shiro Ladonai. Um, and this video actually comes from the Princeton Minion Zamru. So they're an independent community just like us. Um, and this is a video that they made basically to show off um, what their community is like. It's really great. It's karaoke style. I encourage you to sing along.
It's very cool to see another independent community just like us uh, doing amazing stuff with technology. Let me tell you a little bit about what it means to be independent. Independent means that we are a pluralistic community. We don't owe an allegiance to any one movement in Judaism. And the wonderful thing about that is that we're able to do all kinds of different activities. So at one time you may have an Orthodox uh, rabbi teaching you a class about Kabbalah. At another time you may have the tattooed rabbi like me teaching you something completely different. Uh, we have female leaders, we have male leaders, we have transgender leaders. Um, all kinds of perspectives. Matter of fact, one of my favorite things to do, and we could actually do it in the chat room, um, and you can post this during Lachado D, which is our next song, um, is to describe what type of Jewish affiliation you have. Um, and I'll tell you some of my favorites that I've heard so far from this community. Um, Reverend Agnostic, that was one that I really liked. Um, uh, what was the other one? Uh, Secular spiritualist with um, Jew witch, what was it? Oh, shoot, I'm going to mess it up. Uh, Jew witch leanings, <laughs> which was interesting. Uh, conserva renewal, which was a combination of conservative and renewal. Uh, reformative was actually the first one that I ever heard that uh, kind of threw me off, um, which is reform and conservative glued together. But um, yeah, I'd love to see, like, how do you affiliate? When people ask you what kind of Jew you are, what do you say? Um, when people ask me what kind of rabbi I am, I give them an honest answer. I say, I'm a Jewish one. <laughs> so here we go with Lachado D. This is by the Maccabees. <laughs> Nika 
absolutely love that version of Lecha Dodi. Let's uh, see what everybody has to say here about what kind of Jew are you? Well, Alex says, raised conservative, non-observant for 20 years, Torah-based, independent thinking Judaism. Awesome. Carl says, I'm a liberal classical reform Jew going through a conservative conversion. Very cool. So basically, you are an interfaith marriage at that point in, within yourself. Just kidding. Um, so Darian says, a blend of conservative and reconstructionist kind of goes with the flow. Uh, Jenny um, would be a reconstructionist if there was a community near her, but she calls herself reform because that's the easiest thing to... Um, uh, easiest thing to kind of relate to people, and that's certainly true. I think a lot of people call themselves Reform as a way of saying that they are a liberal Jew, um, and and it sort of has become an umbrella term. That's just my own, uh, you know, my own idea of that. I don't know if that's actually true, but I believe that. I'm not even going to begin to pronounce what uh, Adi's uh, unpronounceable <laughs> unpronounceable form of Judaism is. Um, he'll have to talk more about that at his service at 8 o'clock tonight. Um, and then Alex says, at this point, I'm a one-shul Jew. What label is that exactly? <laughs> very cool. I'm very honored to hear that. We should all be honored as a community to hear Alex say that. Um, you know, what kind of Jew is that? I suppose an internet Jew. Um, let's see. Esther says, just Jewish. Uh, but the brick-and-mortar synagogues tend to be Reconstructionist. Kevin says, short version conservative, long version, I believe, in Spinoza's God who reveals himself in the orderly harmony of what exists. So a Kaplanian conservative would be another uh, term for that. Uh, let's see. Um, Axel says, uh, I'm an explorer. That's terrific. Uh, Adam Brown says, Renewal Judaism, but strongly Chabad-influenced. Very cool. So there's a whole variety of terrific ways in which people um, kind of identify in all of the different meanings. I like to think that it's um, 31 flavors, and Carl just beat me to it about saying 31 flavors. Uh, but how about 613 flavors <laughs> might be the better number for us. Uh, we're going to take a moment and uh, sort of meditate a little bit um, about Sukkot. And I have three videos here that uh, will hopefully kind of get us into the spirit of what Sukkot is. Obviously, we are not physically in a sukkah unless, of course, you dragged your computer out into your sukkah. Uh, I'm going to be dwelling in a sukkah later um, with some friends of mine, so I'm excited about that. But uh, I have three videos here. So the first is a terrific video from Godcast. That's G hyphen D cast. Godcast is a great um, organization. Basically what they do is they animate Jewish texts. So they have this great video uh, about Sukkot. After that, I had asked people in an article on Punk Torah to talk about um, uh, what their sukkah looked like to maybe post pictures. Didn't really get a lot of that, but our friend Katsira, who leads services here twice a month, she does a, a Shabbat and a Rosh Chodesh. If you haven't been to one of her services, I highly recommend it. It's amazing, particularly for the folks who sort of identify themselves within renewal and sort of identified with Reconstructionism. This would, uh, her services are, are absolutely uh, fantastic. Um, fantastic for that. Anyway, so she sent me a YouTube video of her sukkah. So uh, we can all take a look at that and sort of think of her sukkah as being like ours. Um, and then finally, another video, not specifically about Sukkot, but I think it brings up an excellent point. I recently watched a documentary called Tent City USA, and I'm wondering if anyone else has uh, seen Tent City USA or is familiar with the concept of a tent city. Um, this is a community, an intentional community that developed in suburban Nashville, um, and it's a tent city. It's where homeless people were building tents and were living um, in a sort of communitarian environment. And the reason I wanted to show this video, along with uh, all of our sort of traditional Sukkot-oriented videos, when we build the sukkah, we build a temporary, let's face it, shack, basically, right? We build something that is very small, 
Unless you're one of these people who built these gigantic elaborate sukkahs, um, and that's a whole other ballgame. But we built this temporary surface, right? It only has three, um, three walls, right? Uh, mine is actually made out of PVC pipe um, and bed sheets. You know, we, we don't even completely thatch the roof. We put uh, branches on the top so that when we look up into the uh, ceiling, we can see through and we can see the stars, which is beautiful unless it rains. Um, but then, actually, we have the mitzvah of building, we have the mitzvah of dwelling, and then we have the mitzvah of tearing it apart, right? So, one year, I was living with a friend of mine in, not necessarily a rural area, but, but way out from the city, and we had a lot of land. And uh, we built a sukkah, and he wasn't Jewish, um, but he went along with every crazy holiday. And so <laughs> we built the sukkah. We had some friends over, and um, we had dinner. And after we built the sukkah, I said, okay, like, you know, we're going to tear this down later, whatever. And it was his house, so I, I promised that I would take care of it since I was, um, you know, just renting a room. And he said, no, like, let's just leave it up. It looks really cool. Like, we can have people over, and it can be just like a gazebo, basically. Um, but, you know, that's not what it is, so you tear it down. But my question is, what if you lived in a sukkah all the time, right? Sukkot is special because it's unique. Camping is fun because it's unique. You don't camp every day, right? You don't dwell in a tent every day. You don't go out in the woods and fend for yourself every day. That's what makes it unique and special, right? But what if that's your day-to-day -day reality? What is that like? So I hope you enjoy these three videos by Godcast, Katsira, and the trailer to Tent City, USA. It's Sukkot, the harvest festival, where people live in booths for a week, and we read the book of Kohelet, Ecclesiastes, the radical and at times hopeless words of wisdom written by King Solomon. And uh, here we go. All is vanity. And a chasing after the wind Said the king who rise and fall The great and the small Said the king who'd sin it all Said the king who'd sin it all The sun rises, the sun goes down The wind blows south and it turns around All the rivers run into the sea of the seas and fall And nothing is new under the sun Now if you see something new you know it's been done So go and have fun and enjoy being young All is vanity And a chasing after the wind Said the king who rise and fall The great and the small Said the king who'd sin it all Said the king who'd sin it all That which is crooked cannot be made straight And too much wisdom can get you real mad And knowing too much can get you real sad But laughter is foolish and joy What does it get? I try to be happy by drinking some wine I built myself houses and gardens Of all shapes and all kinds I gathered silver and the treasure of kings I got myself singers and big bands and blings So I was greater than anyone before Whatever I desired, I got it and more All is vanity And I chase There's reason and time for everything under the sky A time to be born and a time to die A time to break and a time to make A time to love and a time to hate Sometimes sorrow is better than laughter And sometimes sadness can get your heart higher Sometimes the hardcore yelling of the wise Is better than the pop song of fools and the sweetness of lies And yesterday's heartaches can be tomorrow's good old time Now don't be overly righteous nor overly wise I've seen the just men suffer and the evil men thrive When the wise don't get the fortune and the skilled don't get the fame And no one knows who's winning or losing this game All is vanity and a chasing after the wind Said the king, the rise and fall, the great and the small Said the king who'd sin it all Said the king who'd sin it all
Hey, this is Tetsira. Welcome to my Sukkah Tour 5774. It's a couple of days before Sukkot, and I have just finished building my Sukkah. It is, I don't think, uh, halachically correct, but it is sure full of kavana, even if the keva is slightly off. So I have a symbolic third wall you can see back there, uh, and two nice solid side walls. My roof is fabulous, I think. It is made from cuttings from my pomegranate tree, and you can definitely, definitely see the stars up there if, once it gets dark, so that part's accurate. It's that missing uh, full hard fourth wall that's the problem. I also want to show off my fabulous uh, sukkah flags that I bought on Etsy. Um, fantastic artisan actually here in Washington, D.C. too. Uh, so it's Ufros Alenu Sukkat Shalom uh, is what it says right there, which I love. So spread over us uh, like the wings of peace. So that is my fabulous sukkah this year, and I'm excited because it's actually tall enough for me to stand in this time. Uh, and it's also facing, oh, sort of, kind of east this year. Uh, it was something I wanted to do since I come out for prayers in the morning. I really, really wanted to be able to uh, face east in the sukkah a little bit more easily. And as you can see right there, that is also my fabulous beehive, which I also very, very much wanted to be able to see from the sukkah this year. So, Chag Sameach to you as you begin your Sukkot preparations. And I'll close off with as close to the beehive as is possibly safe. Society, you know, now with the economy, I'm not surprised to see anybody homeless. We have to chop wood so we can keep warm. A lot of people have made structures out of uh, whatever material they can get uh, pallets, tarps. People have built something out of nothing. This is our house. Big dog in front. It's our sleeping quarters. That's my bathtub. <laughs> Ted City has kind of given me a new hope in my life. I, I mean, I've been clean, you know, for gosh, eight months. I tell him no, I don't want it, man. I ask God to guide me to be somewhere I can have a home, get myself back together. I've been able to get a tankless water heater, propane water heater. Hopefully the first part of the week we'll be able to take hot showers here. When I had nobody, I could turn to the people in Tent City. Tent City's my family. We declared this morning at approximately 9.30 a state of emergency. We've got to find new land because this is gone. We have 120 people who are scattered. Where the hell are they going to go? Water in first, guys. You're really going to need water. I might have lost my, my home and everything, but I still got my family here. I know that you guys already know that there's an open seat on the Homelessness Commission, and there's going to be an election for the homeless community. I think it would be a good idea if one of you filled that seat. We're trying to keep Tent City open and uh, see if we can get as many people as much help as we can. This is important because it's the first time you've ever had a say. It's your chance to exercise your voice. Homeless, not helpless. That's the key. Six. We don't have wedding rings, but I'm saving up the money. I got about $72, $73 saved up for them. I didn't think it would have been this hard have some central place that you can go where the basics are already given to you. It makes it a little easier for you to live and rebuild ourselves back up. It's, it's tough, but it's not impossible. I'm not about to stop to help people that are still out there. They still need it. And I'm pretty confident that's the reason God took everything from me and put me down there. We're not asking for much. We bleed the same way, we cry the same way. Oh. We got things that we would like to accomplish. Oh, 
we can only get people in Nashville to realize we're people. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. It's an amazing, powerful series of videos. Of course, we had Sukkot uh, video by Godcast. Very honored to see Katsira's Sukkah. And then finally, this trailer to Tent City, which I recommend everyone see that movie. I, I'm pretty sure it's either on Netflix or Hulu. Um, one of the two, but you can look it up, and if you have a Netflix or Hulu account, do watch it. It's very powerful. And it looks from the, the chat room that we actually have a few people who have lived in cars or lived in tents and things like that. It's certainly not easy. Um, I was very lucky when I did live in a car. Um, it was temporary. And, and it was intentional as well. I was a musician, um, and I lived in a Dodge conversion van, and that was my choice. Um, what happens when it's not a choice? And I think Sukkot, the social justice message of Sukkot is that we are called into living in a dwelling where everything is temporary. Its very existence is temporary. It's built so that it can be torn down. Um, and what that means, what it means to be a permanent human being in a temporary world, in a temporary environment. Um, and it's a powerful, powerful thing. So I hope that you'll reflect on that as you are dwelling in your sukkah, uh, whether it is this sukkah, this sukkot shalom that we have created uh, here um, in the one shul environment or a physical sukkah um, somewhere else, somewhere near you. We're going to have Shema together. This is a wonderful video that I found. Um, this is a teenager who actually did this video uh, for her synagogue. I hope you will enjoy this rendition of Shema. tell you that he loves me I won't tell you that he saved my life but I can say as loud and clear as I can sing from my lips to your is that there's one of our God in every one of our lives and that's why we sing Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Oh, and that's why we sing Shema
Adonai Echad I want to bring us to the next piece of our davening, which is an alternative version for me of the Amidah. Now, one of the things about the Amidah that's incredible is that we start off by saying, Blessed are you, Lord our God, uh, King of the universe, God of. And then we mention all of the patriarchs of Judaism and in a uh, conservative or reform or other liberal-leaning community, you'll have the matriarchs as well. What's interesting, though, is what's missing. So we have, and we'll do a test. We'll see how well you do here in the uh, one shul chat room. Who are the patriarchs and who are the matriarchs and who are the two people that are missing? You know, who are the two people that are missing? Don't You don't have to list Abraham and all that, but who are the two people that are missing? Because the two people that are missing actually tells us a lot about what we think about our spiritual ancestors. Does anyone know? Let me give you five seconds to answer. And if you get it wrong, you'll get kicked out of Judaism, which is really easy. Um... Let's see, Ishmael and Esau, they are missing, but technically they're not, uh, they're, they're not part of our patriarchy um, exactly. Um, they are part of the story, but they're not, they're not it. Okay, Adam actually nailed it. It's Bilha and Zilpa. okay? So they are actually um, Jacob's concubines, for lack of a better word, but they are the mothers of Israel, right? Instead, we have Leah and Rachel that are mentioned, because they are the actual wives, right? And Adam is excited, because that means he gets to stay in Judaism. Wonderful. Otherwise, you'd have to live as a Unitarian Universalist, and that would just be terrible, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding, of course. Um, so, uh, you know, so these two women are missing, right? And uh, it's kind of interesting that they're missing, and why, and, and there's a whole, that's a whole complex story as to why they're missing. Um, what I think is interesting about the Amidah is that we start our blessings by saying, Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe. Okay, that's sort of a given, right? And then all of a sudden we're talking about matriarchs and patriarchs. The reason that we do that, as opposed to saying, Baruch Atalonai Elohim Melchalam, and then saying the rest of it, you know, talking about God and how great God is and all of the things that God does for us, we start by talking about ancestry. Now, you don't have to believe that that's a literal heredity ancestry, but it's at least a spiritual ancestry. Um, I believe the reason that we do that is because their journey is ours, right? Their experience, the experience of those people that we read about in the Torah, is our experience. I personally believe that the Torah is a reflection of who we are. It's a mirror on who we are. It's a combination of law, poetry, story, moral quandary, 
I think sometimes it's puzzles, it's rituals, it's a lot of different things. And it's woven together in a way that doesn't necessarily make logical sense. But it's woven together beautifully, and the moral of it is that their journey is ours. We start by saying, Elohei Avraham, Elohei Yitzhak, Elohei Yaakov, to remind us that in every generation we have a responsibility to earn the right to say, Elohei Avraham, Elohei Yitzhak, Elohei Yaakov. The way that we earn that right is simply by being alive. And that's it. That's why in Judaism we only focus on peoplehood and not so much belief, right? We focus on being together. That is the moral imperative, is being together, because they were together, and their journey is ours. So I want to offer up this song that I think, for me, really kind of expands on that. And this is actually by Debbie Friedman, and it's a song about Miriam, who I think really exemplifies um, the prophet in a lot of amazing ways and sort of um, the spirit of do-it-yourself and the spirit of taking control. Um, so this is Debbie Friedman's ode or tribute to, um, to Miriam. It's Miriam's song. She wove was one which sang our history With every thread and every strand She crafted her delight A woman touched with spirit She danced with our light Love Miriam and love that song. It's so energetic. I wish I had a better version of it um, than the one that I have there, but it's pretty darn good anyway. So I want to move now into Misha Barak. I'll give you a quick devar about Misha Barak, a quick drosh actually would be the right term. So Misha Barak, um, we're actually going to do the Debbie Friedman version, so it's a Debbie Friedman uh, double dose. Um, the Misha, Misha Barak is the prayer for healing, right? And we treat it the same way we treat Kaddish, where we say the names of certain people um, and we hope for healing for those people. I'd like to offer this idea that one of the most dangerous phrases that exists today, the one that gets you in the most trouble, the one that is the most difficult to say, 
the one that has the most consequences on ourselves and on the rest of society is I need help. I need help. I think those three words are possibly the most dangerous words you can utter now. And the reason that I think they're so dangerous is that they're very loaded. If you need help, it's because you did not do a good job, because you did not live up to your responsibilities. You are a leech. You are someone who was taking advantage, right? Or you're a helpless victim. And everyone needs to not only help you, but do everything for you, right? If you ask for help once, then you always need it. That there's no such thing as temporary. And that we should be judged for that. We should be judged for needing help. I think that asking for help is a very dangerous thing to do. And I think that's why a lot of times we're afraid to ask for help. Misha Beirach is a very simple way to ask for help. We're asking God and we're asking all of us here in community to pray to God for healing of mind, body, and spirit. And I want to challenge you to be comfortable not only to say the names of people that you know who need healing, but also to say your own name. And I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. About three and a half hours ago, I was at the eye doctor. Um, I need new glasses. It's been a while since I've gotten my eyes checked. Um, and the doctor, the optometrist, discovered something. In the back of my left eye, which you're seeing is my right eye, but it's actually my left eye, I have some kind of something. Um, they're not exactly sure what it is, but it's basically a membrane. It's on the back of my retina. And um, he's not exactly sure if that's what it is. It could be something else. Um, but I discovered it because when I cup my right eye, um, whatever I see, whatever is in my vision, um, comes in and out. It sort of appears and then disappears, kind of like this. And it's because it's kind of like taking Vaseline and putting it on the lens of your glasses. Uh, only it's in the back of my eye, where my retina is. Um, hopefully it'll be okay. Actually, we should hope that it is the uh, retinal membrane, um, because that's actually easy to deal with. You either have surgery to remove it, um, and then you have to have a second surgery to remove the cataract that's going to end up happening after they do the surgery, which is, it's just a racket, but what can you do? Um, that's the way your body is built, and, and you know, it is what it is. Um, so it's either two eye surgeries. Uh, there are drops that will hopefully help, um, uh, or I just don't deal with it. And most people don't actually deal with it. Um, the tricky thing is that these, this, uh, if, if it is the membrane, um, this is something that really just happens to old folks, right? So this is something that happens to, I think it's 8% of the population over 60 years old. Well, I'm 30, <laughs> so um, I knew I was sort of ahead of my time. Um, my mom would say, you know, you're an old soul. Um, I was hoping that that was not <laughs> what put me ahead of my time. Um, but uh, I I'd like to ask to be on your Misha Barak list, if you have one, um, to please pray for me. Um, because it's all going to work out fine. Either I'm going to do the eye drops or I'm just going to deal with it and it just means I'm going to see squiggly lines in my left eye for the rest of my life and whatever. Um, but what if it's worse, right? I mean, there's, there's that much chance, but there's that much chance because there is a chance, right? So um, please pray for me and wish me the best. And I would like to encourage everyone here in the chat room to please um, include the names of people that you know who are in need of healing today.
So we have here Teresa Velen, Abraham Ben Yaakov, Carol Bott, Miriam, Philip, Nana Peterson, Sid, Sherry, Sarah, Carl, Diane, Dorashet, Naomi Bat, Avraham Basara. So we pray for a healing of mind, body, and spirit, and let us say, Amen. My mother is calling me on the phone. She knows, because I haven't called her yet, that uh, uh, my eye thing was done. So this is mom calling me up, I'm sure. <laughs> anyway, um, we're going to move now into um, the Kaddish. This is a wonderful video I found by Annalisa. I hope you will enjoy it. We now say together the Kaddish, and I invite um, anyone to put the name of someone if you're observing yard site or you're in the Shoshim period of ritual mourning uh, to include uh, Kaddish. And um, we will say it together. If anyone needs help, I'll post a link in here. There you go, and you can say Kaddish along with me. Yit Gedal, Yit Gedashime Rabab, Yamadi Rakir Tev, Yam Lik Malchutev, Chayahon of Yomechon, Uf Chayet Kol Beit Yisrael, Bagalav is Mon Kariv, Imru Amen, Yehesh me Rabba me Varakli Alam or Mel Maya. Yet Barak Vyesh Tabak Vyet Paar Vyet Ramam Vyet Nase, Vyet Tadar Vyet Ale Vyet Ala, Shmeda Kudisha Brechu, La Ila Min Kobiar Katavishirata, Tush Bechata Venechamata, Damiran Bielma Vimru Amen. Yehe Shlam Maraba Minshamaya. 
v'chayim, aleinu v'al kol Yisrael, v'imru amen. Osei shalom v'imramav, hu ya'asei shalom, aleinu v'al kol Yisrael, v'imru amen. May the world be renewed, may the world be holy, may we remember those who have passed, and let us say amen. So, I have had such a wonderful time here with everyone at uh, One Shul. I do want to make a really two really quick announcements, and then I have to head out. Uh, the first is that I'm going to be doing a speaking tour of Washington and Oregon. Uh, the dates... Oh, wait, 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 sorry, pushed the wrong button. <laughs> the dates are still not confirmed yet. Um, but I'm working on it. Um, it's actually the University of Puget, or it's Puget Sound University is planning all of this. I am not in charge. I repeat, Patrick is not in charge. There is someone else who is in charge of this. But if you would like me to come to your area, if you're in Washington, Oregon, or I, they're trying to extend it into Idaho, um, if you know anyone there. Tentatively, the plan is that I'm going to uh, fly out on the 23rd of October. That's a Wednesday, um, and I, I'm basically going to take that day to fly out. So that's an empty day where something could be done. Uh, I'm probably going to be flying into Tacoma. Uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'm going to be in Tacoma at Puget Sound. Uh, and then really from Sunday through Wednesday, uh, there's tons of openings. They haven't quite firmed everything up yet, um, so that's where we're going to try to include um, eastern Washington, if we can, more of Seattle, Portland, um, and wherever else. Again, I am not in charge, so I'm not the booking agent, um, but I would encourage you to talk to the person who is the booking agent. I am flying in, and I am flying out. So, um, you know, if you are interested in having me come to your school, even if you're not in the Northwest, um, this is just a particular time that I'm going to be out there. So I would encourage you um, connect with me. I'm going to give you my email address. Email is my preferred mode of communication. People send me Facebook messages and I don't get them. Um, so please uh, send me an email. And even if I don't even if you're not in the Inland Northwest, if you're somewhere else, I try to travel um, and do these speaking engagements, um, not only to get the word out about what we're all doing together here at One Shoal and at Punctora, um, but also to fundraise. Um, it's a great way to get to meet new people, to get to meet new donors. Which leads me to my next thing. This is not free. It is not free. We are a community, and it costs us money to do this, right? It costs about $120 a month just to stream, like that little video box you're looking at right now. That actually costs $120 a month. The chat room costs us another 20 ish dollars a month. Then we have the cost just of processing donations. We have the cost of doing our email list. It's about $45 a month. So all of these little things add up into our budget. All we ask, $10. If you enjoyed a service, if it was meaningful to you, if you appreciate being able to you know, go online and, and go to services, please give $10 click the donate button at the top. And last but not least, we have Darshan Yeshiva that just opened. So I would encourage you, definitely go to darshanyeshiva.org. We have some terrific online classes. It's our online yeshiva. You can train to be a lay Jewish spiritual leader. It's absolutely wonderful. So definitely go to that. Thank you so much for coming, and I look forward to seeing you 8 o'clock tonight for Adi's Around the Shabbat Table.